All right, guys, so welcome back to the garage. Today is another exciting day. We're gonna be installing the cabrio kit that we, we got um, from one of our close friends. We're really excited, see how it looks. I kind of like the way it looks with the cabrio, cabrio clipper kit, I guess that's how it's called. So yeah, well, we're gonna keep on going with this thing. The cabrio kit is finally on. We got a chance to install it last weekend. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to record. It was such a lengthy process and we were just going in and out with it and just getting everything to fit properly was just a pain and it took forever. But she's finally on and she looks perfect. We love the way it looks. This car actually had a cabrio kit before we owned it and we just, we just really like the way it looks and we had to bring it back to this look once again. So here, as you can see, we got the VR6 Mark III VR6 front lip on. It takes a bit of modification, it's not a direct fit, but you can make it work. You don't need uh, special tools or anything like that, just a heat gun and uh, just play with the clips a little bit. And it'll help a lot to keep the front end looking low and aggressive. Since when you do the VR6 swap on a Mark I, the oil pan sits super low as you can probably see right there. So the front lip is gonna help it look a little lower than it actually is since we're not looking for any stance or anything like that. And if you move to the, we move to the side over here, everything is pretty much stock as it would look on a cabrio. No major modifications. But if we move to, move to the back over here, start to see some changes that we made. We actually made a cutout in the rear bumper. Don't mind that sheet of metal right there. This is another thing we are excited about. We finally finished with the shifter. It's all tidied up and it's all, we did all the adjustments needed. I'm really happy how it feels. I might even do this one in my uh, Mark II right hand drive because I like the way it shifts. It shifts pretty, pretty smooth, pretty good. You can clip it on. That's the reverse. Put it in reverse and it's all ready to go. So, and with no insulation or anything, we're gonna be. It's gonna be loud. It's gonna be noisy. The gonna hear every single little shift that's gonna be going on. It's gonna be crazy. But it's gonna be nice and exciting. Have these type of cars that we never have. So it's gonna it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, literally the opposite yeah. of what we've been building the last few years. Yeah, but it's gonna be nice too. It's gonna have nice touches as well. So I'm happy the way it's going. So now that we're done with the shifter, we can move on to the brakes. Since we didn't want the, the brake booster to get in the way of uh, when we were adjusting the shifter cables. And since the last video, last few videos I mean, we got the brackets installed, but that was it. And now we're gonna get the brake booster installed as well as the master cylinder, the brake lines, and finish up with the brakes. The engine bay is finally getting there. We just finished with the brake system over here last night. Everything went pretty smoothly. We didn't have any problems with bleeding the new wheel wood brakes or anything like that. And we're really happy because this is actually one of the stiffest Mark I pedals I've ever felt. It's getting every single bit of pressure. This is probably what it felt like when these cars came out new. Uh, the only thing I'd say that went wrong was I, I stripped one of the fittings for the original uh, rear, rear brake pressure regulator that these cars come with. But thankfully we had these regulators sitting around that come out of a later model Mark I Cabriolet. So the rear brakes are gonna be getting the pressure that they need. And we also switched out the two rear rubber lines with stainless steel lines, cause they were cracking a bit. But now that we got the brake system all done, we can move on up front here over here to the cooling system. We're about to throw on the radiator. So hopefully soon we can get the first startup that we've had on this thing in a long, long time. Check out the radiator we're gonna go with. It's a dual fan setup, and the radiator is from SMP Automotive. I've heard, I cannot confirm, but I've heard that these radiators are actually a bit wider than the rest, so they're gonna help our VR6 stay a lot cooler, uh, especially since these motors run especially hot. We also got the low temperature sensor right here, and we also made a custom plate around the larger fan. In theory, it should direct more colder air into the radiator. We up with the radiator install. Unfortunately, I had to remove it one time to replace the old sending units for the gauges we had in there. But thankfully, we did this cutout in the front cross member, 
so whenever we need access to the block or any parts of the motor in here I can just remove the radiator real quick and we'll have easy access because without this I would have taken probably hours or I would have had to drop the motor to replace those sending units in there so this is honestly one of the best modifications you could do to a VR6 swap on a Mark 1. It's just small little details now to get the car running. My dad is finishing up inside with the engine harness. I'm gonna mess with the fimmer right now so it's not rubbing, install the wheels and lower down to the ground. And we have some great news too. Our friend Adrian is gonna help us fabricate the downpipe. He actually did the downpipe on our Mark II 3.2. So we're gonna get this one done with him as well. He does great work. So now we just have to get the car ready to mount it onto the trailer and take it to him. So let's see how much progress we can make. I'm going to be trying something new today. I'm going to be adding commentary on top of the footage just so I can give a better explanation on what's going on. But in this clip I'm actually replacing the front coilovers so we have a matching set all around. And I'm raising up the total right height around 2 inches so there's no rubbing with the archers or any rubbing with the trailer once we get it mounted on. And my dad is actually working on a temporary downpipe. We're just using some flexible exhaust piping that we picked up from AutoZone just to direct all the hot air out of the engine bay. Eventually we got the car loaded onto the trailer and it was time for us to head down to Humboldt Park, Chicago where our friend's garage is located. Once we got there, I did not record so much for the sake of finishing early. But here's some footage of the first pipe. I believe this was the driver's side, which we got pretty lucky on with our first cut. We just needed it a straight tube up and then a slight angle as you can see in the video. But once we got to the passenger side, that's where the problems began. It was just going a lot of back and forth, cutting, measuring, and just trying to get the bends right. Final downpipe. It's finally done. We got home super late last night at around 1 a.m., but it was definitely worth it because now we can continue on and finish up with the exhaust. Obviously, we couldn't do anything without the downpipe, and no one actually makes a 3.6 downpipe, or at least for the newer 3.6s, the, uh, the exhaust manifolds change a bit. So the angles are just thrown off. And now what we have to get done to it is uh, get the O2 sensor bungs installed. So, so they just have to be welded and then the O2 sensors can be installed. And we will also, we're also going to be heat wrapping the downpipe as well. Here's a closer look. We actually decided to go with MIG welding. We could have gone with TIG welding, but it would have take, taken so, so much longer. That's gonna be a wrap for this video. Excuse my eyes, still recovering from all the welding from last night, uh, but we're just happy to see it on the ground once again with the body kit, the wheels, the roll cage, the floor, just everything that we've been doing to it. We're super happy with it, but unfortunately last night it didn't start up, so we had to push it onto the trailer. So we're gonna see what's going on with it, hopefully in the next video. Uh, so the startup is gonna have to wait for now. Uh, hopefully we get the exhaust done But yeah, that's it. Let us know what you guys think of the, of the car so far the project how it's going and Thanks for watching. Peace